Hi, it's Corrine for Cut at Home, and today I have an album to share with you today. This is five and three quarters by four and a quarter, and it's a chipboard album. I've used the beautiful Prima Romance Novel Collection, six by six. And for the inside, I have used some Graphic 45 Staples tags. I'll have everything listed on Cut at Home's blog, all the products used, but I just quickly wanted to show you I have four pages in this album, and I've used two tags and sandwiched them against a hinge system, and I have little pockets. Every single page has a pull-out bracket card that I designed on my Cameo, but you could cut just a piece of paper and use a decorative edge, uh, a decorative punch edge if you wanted to for a pull-out mat where photos can be added. And then little photos can be added on each one of these pages. Everything was left open to allow a photo to slide under. So I do have a full start to finish on this. I also have all the measurements on Cut at Home's blog. So check the description box for all the information and I hope you stay tuned and watch the start to finish. Thanks so much for watching. So these come in different colors and sizes. I'm using the regular black. And I'm going to sandwich them together to give me my page. And I'm going to make four pages. And I need to measure the height of my album. I'm going to be using Kathy Orta's Hidden Hinge System. Her binding system but I'm going to do it a little bit different I'm not going to have the wings that she always has on the ends I'm just going to leave those off so the first thing I need to do though is measure the height of my album and I'm not going to measure it see how how they round up at the top and the bottom I'm going to start where the, the straight edge is so I think four and a quarter will be perfect for this so I'm going to cut my paper to four and a quarter This is black cardstock. It is 65 pound weight cardstock. And now I need to score my paper. Let me set these aside. Okay, so for Kathy Orta's hit, Hidden Hinge System, binding system, you need to determine what size gusset that you want. I like to do a larger gusset, so I'm going to do a half inch. You can do a quarter inch, you could do three quarters of an inch, whatever size gusset you want. Um, and I will, if she still has that original video up, I will link that down in the description box below where she goes over her tutorial in great detail. If for some reason I don't link it below, that means she doesn't have it available. There's tons of great tutorials out there on this. Now, Kathy's um, system, she leaves a wing on either end and that's for extra support. I'm not going to be doing that. So I'm gonna start right in on my measurements. And her measurements are a half inch, a half inch, and then whatever size gusset you want. A half inch, a half inch, whatever size gusset you want. So on and so forth. So for me, I like a half inch gusset. So I'm just gonna start scoring at a half inch. So I'm doing one half inch, one inch. One and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, four and a half, five. And now let me count that and see how many I need because I'm doing four pages. Two, gusset, three, gusset. So I need one more, so I need to go to five and a half. So to reiterate, I scored it at one half inch, one inch, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, four and a half, five, and five and a half. Now, had I figured this out it, um, beforehand, I could have cut my paper down to size, but it doesn't matter, you can cut it afterwards. So I'm going to be cutting it at five and a half inches. So again, my spine piece is four and a quarter by five and a half. And that will all uh, be based on what, what you're using, if you're doing an exact tag album like I am, then these are the measurements you're going to want. If you're doing more pages, you're going to need more hinges. So let me try and show you this. Hopefully I can catch it in the light. There you go. 
so again with her system you do a half inch and then whatever size your gusset is half inch half inch gusset half inch half inch gusset so on and so forth now you're going to want to um, add double-sided tape I'm using some angel craft tape in the one quarter inch and you want to add it to just your hinge pieces this if if you've never done this before this will all make a whole lot more sense in just a moment if you have done this then you already know this procedure you just want to place your tape just on your hinges and you want to skip your gussets so I'm skipping one adding it and technically I'm so I'm skipping the first one I'm adding it because we're going to be adhering those together this next one's going to be my gusset these two were adhering together this will be my gusset so I don't want tape there I'm going to add tape to adhere these two together then that leaves me another gusset and then my last hinge make sure to burnish your tape down and now go ahead and fold along those score lines on where you score you will have an indent and then you will have a bump so let me show you up close here's an indent and that's where I actually used my score tool on on the other side you have a bump you want to fold into those bumps that'll give you the best score without cracking your paper and just go over that with your bone folder so I'm going to do these one by one score them, burnish them, remove the tape, adhere them together. So now I'm adhering two of my flaps together. Okay, now we're going to skip our gusset, fold it over, and adhere those together. bit of tape sticking over. I could have folded that over but I didn't see it so I'm just going to cut that off and now in between each time you can press it down on your table and that'll give you your flap which will be your your hinge. So I have one last one to do you really want to burnish it down both ways just to kind of break those fibers of your paper so they your pages will turn easily and now let me show you up close what it will look like So that is four hinges for my book. Now, like I said, on Kathy Orta's tutorial, she's going to have wings on the end. That does give it a little bit more stability, but I like it like this. Now you want to go through and add tape to the entire back side of this. Now I'm going to burnish that down. And now I want to add the double sided tape to each one of my hinges because I'm sandwiching my um, tags to them so I'm going to need double sided tape on both of them so here's what it looks like and now we need to attach our tags onto them now each tag has a front and a back side of the eyelet I'm going to sandwich them together so no matter which way you're looking at the pocket you're going to see the front side and now I can either attach one at a time
and match it up. But I think to make it easy, I'm going to glue the tops together because what I'm going to do is leave a side pocket open so I can put a pull in mat. So I'm going to glue each one of these together just at the top and the bottom. And then I will sandwich them onto the binding system after I've glued them together. So I'm going to do that with all my tags using wet adhesive. So now they're all glued together. I did use a little hot glue in the top as well just to make it quick because they didn't want to um, dry that quickly. So now I'm just going to remove my adhesive from both sides and sandwich my tag inside. So it's actually open all the way through like this. I'm going to sandwich it on one end and that leaves me a pocket for the other end. And you want it to go up to your score line but not over because you want the pages to turn easily. So now that you've got one done, go ahead and make sure that your tag album matches up each one that you put in. And now here is our little album. I am going to put some glue in between these as well, or some tape. I just want to make sure that it is adhered to my book very well. Okay, so for our chipboard covers, we need two pieces of chipboard that are five and three fourths by four and a quarter. And we need a spine piece that is five and three fourths by two inches. For the cover for our chipboard covers, I'm using the exact same black cardstock cut to six and three quarters tall. I made it one inch larger than the height of my book and I did not cut the length down, so it's by 11 inches. I will worry about that when I'm done. Next thing I want to do is adhere these together using one half inch score tape from Angel Craft, or excuse me, one half inch double sided adhesive. And just go ahead and line those up. And now we're going to attach our spine piece and our front and back cover. To make this quick, I'm going to go ahead and use wet adhesive. Now I want to leave myself a one inch um, excuse me, a one half inch gap at the top and the bottom, and that's just so I can wrap it around my chipboard. So press that down. I'm going to use a brayer to make sure it's really pressed down well. And now I'm going to add my front and back chipboard, doing the same thing, but you want to make sure to leave a gap in between so you can fold them without your paper cracking. So I have a little template. This is two pieces of chipboard, and I like to use that so I don't eyeball it, but you can by certainly eyeball this. Again, you want to leave two thicknesses or one eighth inch gap. I actually tend to leave a little bit larger gap. It's all in your preference. And I'm really pressing this down, making sure it's adhered well. And I started this in the middle so that where the over 
overlapping paper is will be on the spine of the book. So now all of this is excess. We don't need all of this. So I'm going to measure out about a half inch and cut off the excess. Okay, so these we don't need. Now we want to go ahead and miter the corners. You want to leave a little bit of gap. You don't want to cut all the way to your chipboard. So just cut off a little bit off the edge. Again, leaving some away from your chipboard. This will just help alleviate bulk. And it's very important to put tape right along the edge where your book will be folded. If you do not, your paper will bubble when it folds. So make sure to do both your spine and your covers along the edge where your book folds. Make sure that's burnished down well. Remove all your tape backing. Paper before you actually fold it, bend it in all different, the different directions. Just sort of training the paper which way you want it to go. And go ahead and fold in your long sides. Use your bone folder as well. Make sure it's adhered down well. And now tuck in your sides before you fold in the small sides. This will give you a nicer fold when you fold it. So I'm just using my bone folder and I'm very carefully tucking that in. If you're too rough, it'll crack it or rip it. So I don't, I don't know how well that'll pick up, but let me show you a side that's not tucked in right here. Okay, see how that sticks out right there? And now this side I've tucked in. Just using the edge of my bone folder, just lightly tuck that in. Otherwise you will have these points on the edge of your book. So I like to do all of those first and then go ahead and fold it over. bone folder, press it down, and do the last side as well. Now you can see that gives us a perfect edge. So for a cover piece, I like to do this. You can wait and just add pattern paper if you want. I like to add matching paper and then usually put a mat of pattern paper on top. This is 10 and 5 eighths by 5 and 5 eighths. This, all the measurements will be listed on Cut at Home's blog if you have any questions. And I did add two more pieces of tape to the middle of the spine. I just want to make sure that when my book is adhered down, it's not going anywhere. So again, I will just center this. Press it down with my brayer. And now you want to be very careful and fold it where your spine piece is. So I just kind of lightly push, find where that is. Once you find it very, very gently with your score, your bone folder, press that crease. It may look like I'm pressing hard, but I'm barely pressing at all. And you're just wanting to lightly bend that up. Take your time. Do that for both sides. Again, I'm being very careful. I have pressed too hard before and it has cracked my paper or ripped it. So just do it very gently. And now here is our little book. Now I'm going to adhere this directly into my book. So I'm going to remove all the back tape backing and center that. Wow. 
You want to just be very gentle, set it down, see if you're happy with it before you press it down. I'm going to... I think I'm going to move it down just a little bit. Okay, and once you're happy, go ahead and press down the middle where your gussets are. And here is our little book. At this point, I will go ahead and embellish it. And um, if you're looking for any measurements, check out Cut It Home's blog. They'll all be listed on there. And I hope you stay tuned, watch the process of this. Thanks so much for stopping by.